the church said the Lord bless everyone in Jesus name and he'll give you reason experiences to praise his name all through your life in Jesus name father we thank you for a meeting together thank you for your faithful people you've chosen them you've selected them you are sending them forth as workers ministers and leaders I will pray Lord as we serve you and as each one serves you you'll give them reason to praise you abundantly in Jesus name your praise will never cease from their mouths and your wonders will never cease from their ministry thank you Lord for the answer in Jesus name we pray God bless you. you can see now we're coming to Psalm 146 and our text is from verse 1 to verse 10 Psalm 146 reading from verse 1 to verse 10 we're looking at the first line of verse 1 praise ye the Lord and then the last line of verse 10 the last line of verse 10 praise ye the Lord the psalm begins by giving us a commandment and by offering us the privilege of praising the Lord he calls us to praise the Lord praise ye the Lord and then in between those verses Verses 1 and 10, you know, gives us the reasons why we're praising the Lord. And the praising the Lord is not just like one day or just a moment. Look at verse 2. It says in verse 2, while I live, while I praise the Lord, I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. That leads us to what we are talking about today the reason for praising God at all times the reason for praising God at all times in Psalm 34 reading from verse 1 Psalm 34 tells us in verse 1 I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth you, you see those words there at all times it's a call it's a calling it's a commandment and then it becomes our commitment i will bless the lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth in first thessalonians chapter 5 reading from verse 16 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, reading from verse 16, Rejoice evermore. You have a God in heaven who is a covenant-keeping God and your heavenly Father. Rejoice evermore. You have a Savior, you have a Redeemer who counts you worthy of salvation that he paid the greatest price for you. Rejoice evermore. You have somebody referred to as a friend that is closer than a brother and he has all the power. He says all power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. He conquered the devil for you. Rejoice evermore. And then in verse 17, pray without ceasing. Well, you understand that doesn't mean that every time you are closing your eyes, well, you have to open your eyes and walk about. That doesn't mean you are really praying every minute of every moment. Even Jesus did not pray every minute of every moment. He preached when he was preaching, he wasn't praying. And then he taught, he answered questions, he asked questions, he did a number of things. But this means that every time there is a challenge every time there is something that you need solution to you pray without ceasing without stopping 
Well, you sleep. When you are sleeping, you are not praying. And when you do all those other things, you are not praying. And don't use this as an excuse not to preach because, you know, I'm praying without ceasing. And don't use this as an ex excuse not to go to work and not to do what you have to do and write what you need to write. I'm praying without ceasing. Don't use this one as an excuse to contradict another scripture. I'm praying without ceasing. All it means is that at every opportunity, all it means is at every time of need, at your crossroad, and at the difficulties and challenges you have, pray without ceasing. You still have to do other things though. No? And then in verse 18, it says, in everything, give thanks. You are praising the Lord in everything, in every situation, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You'll be a happy Christian. And you will be a fulfilled Christian and minister in Jesus' name. The reason for praising God at all times. We're looking at this under three perspectives. Number one, the purposeful praise of a gracious God. He's gracious. He has forgiven our sins. And he has sent us out to go and tell other people their sins can be forgiven too. So gracious a God. We need to praise him. The purposeful praise of a gracious God. Point number two you the praiseworthy performances of a great God. It shows his greatness by destroying every obstacle before us, by dividing the Red Sea so that the redeemed people of God can pass over by giving manna from heaven, by giving water out of the rock, by defeating those Amalekites, and then by opening River Jordan for the people of God to go into the promised land is praiseworthy. His performances make him to be praiseworthy, the creator of the heaven and the earth, and the covenant keeping God for every child of God, for every family, and for the whole church. He is praiseworthy because of his performances. Point number two the praiseworthy performances of a great God. Number three, the perfect perception about our glorious God. What a glorious God! What a mighty God, what a majestic God, what a highly exalted God, and because of that, we the Christians will perceive how faithful He is to everyone, to the poor, and to the rich, to the young, and to the older generation, and to everyone in every generation. And when we have that perception in a perfect way, we know that He's in charge of the whole earth of the Christians, of the righteous, of the unrighteous. His dominion covers every territory. His glory is manifested everywhere. And because of that, we are praising the Lord. Point number three, the perfect perception about our glorious God. Number one. In number one, the purposeful praise of our gracious God. We are looking at Psalm 146, verses 1, 2, three and four look at verse one praise the lord praise the lord oh my soul then in verse two it says while i live while i live doesn't matter where i'm living and doesn't matter the conditions around me as long as i remain alive while i live will i praise the lord i will sing praises unto my god while i have any being and then in verse 3 in verse 3 it says put not your trust put not your confidence put not your faith put not your reliance in a princess nor in the son of man in whom there is no help and then in verse 4 it says his breath goeth forth goeth out he returned to his earth in that very day his thoughts perish there are three things we're looking at here verse one number one the command to praise god verse two that's number two the constancy in praising god verses three and four that is number three the caution against princes replacing god god is our savior princes cannot save us 
He is a great physician. Princes cannot heal us. He is the one to make the way to heaven for us to get to heaven. And princes cannot do that. The caution against princes replacing God. Number one. Number one, the command to praise God. The command to praise God. Look at that again in verse one of our text. Praise ye the Lord is a command that he is, uh, you know, if you love the Lord, he gives you the command inspired by the Spirit of God. He says, don't murmur, praise him. Don't grumble, praise him. Don't complain, praise him. Don't fret, praise him. Don't worry, praise him. And don't allow the flesh to take over your spirit. Don't ever complain. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Have you noticed the difference between those two lines? Number one, praise ye the Lord. Here is a preacher. Here is uh, in the psalmist. Here is the king telling his subjects and he's saying, uh, everyone that uh, hears the sound of my voice, praise ye the Lord. But now look at the second part. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. This is not the preacher that will say, do as I say, but don't do as I do. It's not a preacher that will say, when you have any problem, when you get to any crossroad, when you get to the border of Jordan, and when the, uh, the people are against you, the Ammonites and all those enemies, when they're against you, praise ye the Lord. And then in his own life, when there's any little problem, when there's any little challenge, he'll murmur, he'll grumble, he'll criticize the church, he'll criticize everybody they don't love me they're not looking my direction i'm going through this and nobody is visiting me as he tells other people that when you get to that situation praise the lord he himself now says praise the lord oh my soul that's a commandment and i pray that in our own time of difficulty and crossroad we will not forget what we are preaching as we're telling other people to praise the lord we ourselves excitedly and joyfully and cheerfully will keep on praising the lord every time in our lives and families in jesus Jesus name. Isaiah chapter 12, we're looking at verse 3. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3, therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Now if you are saved, look at verse 4. It says in verse 4, in that day shall ye say, praise the Lord. Tell other people, praise the Lord. Let them join you. Let them agree with you as you are praising the Lord. You're also telling them, praise the Lord. If anybody is coming to you at any situation, like the friends of Job, and then they are crying and they are mourning, and then as they step at your door, they are wailing. You say, what's the matter with you? I'm saved. We are saved. And the Lord is on our side. And his promises will never fail. What are you crying about? Then you pass the commandment unto them. Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. We're looking at Romans chapter 15. In Romans chapter 15, looking at verse 10, again he says, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people as the gentiles come to know the lord and they are born again here is a commandment that comes to every one of us gentiles ye gentiles you rejoice with his people in verse 11 it says again praise the lord all ye gentiles praise the lord all ye pagans who are now redeemed and you are saved and you are born again he called you out of darkness and you are now in the light of the lord remember the commandment praise the lord all ye gentiles and lord him lift him up exalt him all ye people and then in hebrews chapter 13 reading from verse 12 it 
says, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate in verse 13. Since he has suffered for us, he now tells us in verse 13, Let us go forth therefore unto him. He suffered for us, is a substitute, is the final sacrifice, is a sanctifier. Because of that, let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing its reproach bearing the persecution and bearing whatever the unbelievers and the sinners will throw at us because we believe salvation and because we believe in the sanctifier and he sanctifies us and he makes us holy and he makes us pure and we're always rejoicing we are on our way to heaven we examine our lives we're following peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord and what was impossible for us in the past to live a victorious triumphant and conquering life we're living the life now we don't mind the reproach were bearing his reproach and then in verse 14 it says for here ye have no continuing city but we seek one to come now verse 15 as a result of all that by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise let us offer the sacrifice of it sometimes it's not convenient to come to him. sometimes it's a little bit tough and hard when there's pain in the body and when there is scarcity all around and when the dangers are there and when we not only that we read in the news we see with our eyes the things that are happening and then the praise has to come out like a sacrifice that we're offering unto the lord by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to god continually all the time continually that is the fruit of our leaves giving thanks to his name we're looking at point number two now number two is the constancy in praising god the constancy in praising god you know what that means you never take a vacation from piercing God. Lord, allow me this time. I want to grumble a little. I want to complain a little. I want to murmur a little. I want to nurse my wounds a little. You can't do that because now it's your constancy and your consistency in praising God that makes us to know that you know who God is how exalted God is, how mighty God is, and whatever you are going through, even when Christ was on the cross, there was still reason to praise God because that sacrifice on the cross was to accomplish something that the world did not understand at that time. Because of that, we're praising God constantly, all the time. In Psalm 146, reading from verse 2, it says, While I lay, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God. And I'm not singing grudgingly. I'm not singing with some questions in my mind. Why this? Why that? God is wise. Whatever he allows to happen, he has his reason. We praise his wisdom. And we praise his love. We praise his affection. And we praise him for his attributes. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Let's look at Psalm 34, reading from verse 1. Psalm 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord. Do I want him to bless me? I will bless the Lord. Do I want him to load me with benefits every time? I will bless the Lord. Do I want to make heaven rejoice? I will bless the Lord when how often at all times 
His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Continually. His praise shall be in my mouth. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Then in verse 3, it assures us, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. If you're going to carry a load, you can just stand, uh, you know, straight, and then uh, you're inviting people, come and carry the load with me. Bend down yourself, begin. And as you begin, uh, and you're carrying the load yourself, then you can invite the rest of us, come carry the load with me. If you want other people to magnify the load, you begin, begin, begin in your life, in your family, whatever situation you are going through, begin that praise, and then you can call other people, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. And look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. Ephesians 5, 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. In your heart to the Lord. Whatever you are singing, ask yourself, who am I singing to? Am I singing to myself? Am I singing to the deaf who do not understand and you cannot evaluate the sound coming out of me? Am I singing to people I love? I have affection for them. I want my son to lift up their spirit. Think about you are singing to. Am I singing to God? He has heard the songs of angels. He has heard the songs of the redeemed. He hears the songs all over the earth. And now you come to offer song unto the Lord. You better be your best best because he knows music the music on earth and the music in heaven and the music of all generations and the music of all the psalmists therefore when you are singing to the lord you make melody in your heart to the lord and then in verse 20 it says giving thanks always always there's no time you are not giving thanks and you can't you know be outside there you grumble you criticize decides to complain and then it's time to come and minister and then you come in here and you say praise the lord hallelujah you see the negative thing you said outside there and the negative disposition you have inside here nullifies and totally um, erases out all the hallelujah praise the lord outside let there be an hallelujah in your heart at home let there be an hallelujah in your heart in the place of work anywhere you are let your heart be going out going forth to god in praises and then when you come to the church it will be a continuation of the hallelujah and the praise the lord you had outside and then you're giving thanks always for all things unto God, for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 12. Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 12, it says, giving thanks unto the Father, not to the angels, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet suitable to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light look at what he has done in verse 13 who has delivered us i am delivered i am delivered praise the lord i said i am delivered praise the lord let somebody who is delivered say i am delivered praise the lord it says, who has delivered us from the power of darkness? Praise the Lord. Somebody there said, praise the Lord. If you are not just uh, looking at, you know, preacher, if you are part of this, uh, there's somebody there, praise the Lord. You are delivered. Your family is delivered. Your children are delivered going to school coming back from school going out and coming back they are delivered in jesus name and anywhere you go the umbrella the shadow the protection of the lord will be upon you in jesus name 
who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. I am in the kingdom. Where are you? I said, where are you? In which kingdom are you? You are the kingdom of God and nothing evil will happen to your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 14. It says in verse 14, in whom we have redemption. I have something. I have redemption. I have redemption. Let the people of God say so. I have redemption. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Number three there. Number three is the caution against princes replacing God. Look at Psalm 146 verse 3. Put not your trust in princes. What that means is God can use princes to help you. To give you something god can use princes he can use anybody but your confidence must be in god and when you pray to god god will pick up any prince he wants to pick up that is your destination your final point of seeking help is not in the princes and yet god will use any of the princes he wants to use what we know is God will bless you. He can use somebody from the west, from the east, but God will bless you. He can use somebody from the north, from the south, God will bless you. And so when a prince becomes a channel of blessing to you, you are not looking at them that next time when do you need something here, you are going back to that prince. God has a thousand and one princes all over the earth anyone he wants to use he will use them to bless you anytime in jesus name put not your trust in princes nor in the son of man in whom there is no help look at verse 4 it says his breath goeth forth he returned to his earth in that very day his thoughts his plans his proposals and his promises all perish but when they are gone god is still there i say god is still there and when one prince is gone another prince will be raised up to offer help anywhere help is needed in jesus name let somebody shout a good amen in jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 thus says the lord cause it be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm whose heart departed from the lord it's not saying that men cannot help us of course they do but if our hearts depart from god and then we'll say, I don't need to pray anymore. So as do, so a man, a prince, or uh, anybody is there. Then we we'll replace God with man. And God says he doesn't want that. We shouldn't give the glory of God. God is the giver. God is the helper. God is the restorer. God is the reliever and God is the one that provides for us. He is the provider. We should not leave God and replace God with man, any man. He can use man, he will use man, but our heart should not be centered on them. Cause it be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm, whose heart departed from the Lord. In verse 6, it says, For he shall be like the hares in the desert and shall not see when good cometh but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited but look at verse 7 happily now tells us blessed is the man that trusteth in the lord are you the blessed one there I said, are you the blessed one there? You trust in the Lord, you will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, 
and whose hope the Lord is. Look at verse 8. He shall be, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that uh, spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf, your leaf, shall always be green. And shall not be careful in the year of drought or famine, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. You will not stop yielding fruit. I will not cease bearing fruit. In Jesus' name. Let's look at number two now. Number two, the praiseworthy performances of our great God. Look at Psalm 146, looking at verse 5. 146, verse 5, happy is he that has God, the God of Jacob, for his help, whose hope is in the Lord, in his God. I want you to look at three words there. Number one, happy. Number two, help. Number three, hope. Look at that verse again. Happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord is God. We're looking at three things. Say number one, present help from the God of creation. The present help from the God of creation. Number two, persevering hope in the God of compassion. It's always compassionate. And whatever you are going through, if anybody is concerned at all, God is concerned about you. Say, God is concerned about me. Don't, don't talk like an orphan, like a fatherless person, a person that has no help. I look here, I look there. You know what you're doing? You're looking horizontally. Look vertically, look up. And as you're looking up, help will come like rain from heaven in Jesus' name. I see help coming to you. I see the rain showers of blessing coming upon your family. It will come in Jesus' name. And then, number three, personal happiness. You will be happy. Personal happiness in God for our cure. Personal happiness in God for our cure. Look at number one. Present help from the God of creation. Look at Psalm 146. We're journeying two verses together. Verses 5 and 6. Look at this. Happy is he that has the God of Jacob for himself. His help. Whose hope is in the Lord is God. Verse 6. It tells us who made heaven. That's the creator. And earth. That's our creator. He made the sea. And all that therein is, which keep it truth forever. That's why we'll put those two verses together. Present help from the God of creation. Look at uh, Psalm 46. In Psalm 46, verse 1, God is our refuge and help. A very present help in trouble. Read that, make it personal. One, two, three, go. God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Your help is right there. It will help you. When you don't know how to solve that problem, it will help you. It will solve that problem. When you don't know how to go out of that situation, it will help you. It will always make a way out of trouble for you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 5. Look at verse 5. It says in verse 5, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that tell me right early look at that make it personal it says god is in the midst of you you will not be moved nothing will move you 
no storm will move you no danger will move you no situation will move you if you are the only believer trusting god in that community he will be with you a very it tells us in that verse 5 it says in that verse 5 still telling us about the help it says god shall help her the lord will help me i said the lord will help me it will help you and that right early your help will not come late your provision will not come late that employment will not come late that provision will not come late it will help you and that right early acts chapter 26 we're looking at verse 22 acts chapter 26 verse 22 having therefore obtained help of god that was his experience that will become your experience having therefore obtained help of god i continue unto this day i will continue i said i will continue are you sure are you certain you will continue nothing will cut short your journey witnessing both to small and great saying none other things than those which the prophets and moses did say should come in verse 23 here is what he was saying here is what we're saying continually and because we're saying this same thing continually he received help from god and we are receiving help from god that christ should suffer and that he should be the force that shall rise from the dead and shall show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, we're looking at verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4, we're looking at verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly. The Lord is waiting for you. Let us therefore come boldly. He knows the challenge. He knows the problem. He wants to solve the problem now. He wants to be your present help. So there is no timidity now. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, not the throne of judgment. Judgment day has not come yet. Whatever has happened, even if you have done wrong, he will forgive in Jesus' name. He loves you. We come to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. Somebody there is obtaining mercy today. And find grace to help. And find grace to help in time of need. Amen in your life. Look at number two here. Number two is the persevering hope in the God of compassion. Look at this. I'm reading verse 5 now of Psalm 146. And I'm linking that with verse 7. It says, happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help. Whose hope, that's the word we're looking for now, whose hope is in the lord is god look at verse 7 the reason why we have hope in the lord in verse 7 which executes judgment for the oppressed if you are oppressed we have hope in him if you are under any attack any affliction we have hope in him if there's any load too heavy for you to carry and you're carrying a load you say this is much there is hope for you today I said there is hope for you today. It says, which executed judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. Today, you will not go hungry to sleep in Jesus' name. All those concerns you have, where do I get this? Where do I get this? Where do I get that? Hope in God, provision will come. The Lord loses the prisoners. All your prison doors will be opened in Jesus' name. Hope in the Lord. Look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 21. Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 21. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now, yet now, yet now, 
as he reconciled in verse 22 he has reconciled you in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight that's talking about you if it has not happened it will happen look at verse 23 in verse 23 if he continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel the gospel the good news gives us hope and then you remain there you don't allow any trial any temptation any situation to move you out away from the hope of the gospel the good news in the gospel that the lord has given you you abide there which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereof i paul a mage a minister that hope will abide in your life in jesus name we're looking at hebrews chapter 3 verse 6 hebrews chapter 3 verse 6 for christ as a son over his own house whose house we are whose house we are he abides there the great physician abides there and the great strengthener of his people he abides there in the house whose house we are uh, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope the rejoicing of the hope the rejoicing of the hope firm until the end anytime you come into the presence of god and you hear the word of god the word that lives in you and the word that lifts you up and the word that tells you don't worry solution has come and such your prayer has come you don't go out dejected and still mourning and still crying and still saying my condition is like this now you uphold the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end and as you are hopeful like that light will shine through darkness will vanish away and the power of god will uphold you in jesus name i will hold fast to the hope that is set before me your life is hopeful because of calvary your life is hopeful because of the good news on the cross that he became your substitute and he has carried the sin and the consequences of sin away from your life there is hope in your life my brother there's hope for that your wife i said there is hope for your beloved wife there is hope for your children and there is hope for you you are not hopeless say i'm not hopeless my husband is not hopeless my wife is not hopeless look at the voice are you seeing for your wife my children are not hopeless my family is not hopeless the lord assures you hope has come brother sister hope has come look at hebrews chapter 6 and we're looking at verse 18 hebrews chapter 6 we're looking at verse 18 that by two immutable things in the which it was impossible for god to lie impossible for god to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us strong consolation and there is hope before you no dejection anymore in your life in jesus name look at number three here number three is the personal happiness in god for our cure now we're coming back to psalm 146 and i'm linking up verse 5 with verse 8 look at verse 5 happy is he who is that where is he where is she why don't you ever smile then 
Why don't unbelievers see a smile and joy and cheerfulness on your face? What do you go about as if you are downcast and your shoulders are down? And then you are thinking of the problem more than of the solution giver. Why don't you think about God? Cheer up now, cheer up. You are happy. I am happy. I am joyful. And the joy of the Lord will be the strength of your life in Jesus' name. Verse 5, happy is he that has the God of Jacob for himself, whose hope is in the Lord is God. Happy. Link that with verse 8. In verse 8, the Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. That's why we're happy. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. That's why we're happy. The Lord loveth the righteous. Look at Matthew chapter 11. Here is what the Father has sent Jesus to do for you and for me. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. Verse 5, what do we hear? What do we see? The blind receive their sight. If you are blind, God will open your eyes. But you don't understand what I mean. You know, Hagar was somewhere. And the child, Ishmael, was thirsty. And the child was about to die. And Hagar could not see the well of water. And she threw the child far off saying i don't want to see the death of the child and she was sorrowful and then the son was also sorrowful and it's like both of them thought the child was going to die of thirst all of a sudden god opened the eyes of Hagar, and he saw a well of water there your well of water is nearby your supply is nearby Although you have not seen age before, but God opens the eyes of the blind. You will see your prosperity. You will see your provision. You will see the well of water. Those needs are already met and the needs are provided for. God open your eyes in Jesus' name. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up. Anything that is dead in your constitution, in your life, you'll come alive in Jesus' name. And the poor have the gospel preached unto them. And then in verse 6, it says, And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. As we have read in, in Psalm 146, verse 8, he also lifts up those who are bowed down. We're looking at Luke chapter 13, verse 11. Luke chapter 13, verse 11, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And then in verse 12, And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. Brother, sister, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, and he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. I didn't hear your amen. And the Lord is still the same. He's still doing that today. He'll do it for you. He'll do it for mommy. I didn't hear your amen. You know, we traveled to uh, Emo stage and we're having uh, 
uh, together all the all the states in the east we came together and were having wonderful time with the lord and there was this uh, mama she was bent low just like this and then we prayed for everyone and it was a camp they come there and on this particular day uh, mama went with a bucket of water and then she was bent down like this she couldn't lift up herself and she couldn't see anybody and then she got uh, the water in that position from the well and then bacon still bending down uh, to some young people there uh, children come help me carry this bucket and while they bend down to carry the bucket all of a sudden my mom stood up straight all that are bowed down you know if it was in the good olden days the people will be happy and they will clap their hands because the Lord is still raising those who are bowed down. If you are bowed down spiritually, if you are bowed down physically, if you are bowed down physically or whatever, the Lord will raise you up. I said the Lord will raise you up. He will make you happy. He'll make you hopeful. And the help will come for you from above in Jesus' name. He will kill you. He has killed you already. Look at Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 33. We're looking at verse 3. It says, call unto me and I will answer thee. He will answer you today. He will answer your prayer today. And show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. A new revival God is going to make in your life in Jesus name it will burst forth I said it will burst forth miracles you have never seen power demonstration you have never seen answers to prayers you have never seen in your very life it will come in Jesus name call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, Behold, I will bring it health and kill. I will bring you health and kill. That thing will not take your life. I will bring it health and kill. I will kill them. Who are they then? I will kill them. Where are they then? He will kill you. I will kill them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. Let's come to number three now. Number three is the perfect perception about our glorious God. We're looking at Psalm 146 and we're reading from verse 9. Psalm 146 verse 9, the Lord preserveth the strangers, he relieveth the fatherless and the widow, but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. And then in verse 10 it says, the Lord shall reign forever. In your life, the Lord shall reign forever. Over your problems, the Lord shall reign forever. Over that concern that you have, the Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations, and everybody one, two, three, go, praise ye the Lord. You will praise God in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the promised resources for the fatherless and widows. Number two, the predicted recompense of the faithless and the wicked. Number three, the perpetual reign of the Father of all wonders. Look at number one. In number one, the promised resources for the fatherless and widows. Fatherless and widows in, in Psalm 146 verse 9 the Lord preserveth the strangers he relieveth the fatherless and widow 
he relieves the fatherless and he relieves the widow look at psalm 68 reading from verse 4 in psalm 68 verse 4 sing unto god sing praises to his name extol him and he rideth upon the heavens by his name jah that means that jah means lord actually when we say hallelujah it means the two words there ali then yeah hallelujah that means praise the and then jah means the lord hallelujah means praise the lord and then he says and rejoice before him look at verse 5 in verse 5 a father to the fatherless a father to the fatherless maybe there's somebody there that says i have no father i have no i have no mother i'm an orphan the lord will take care of you he'll take care of everything you need in life as if you had a father in fact he will take care of you more than an earthly father in jesus name and a judge of the widows as a widow he'll provide for you he'll take care of you he'll protect your life as if you were not a widow you see there's no difference once you have god you have his promises and you have his provision and you have jesus the redeemer and the one that is taking care of everyone that believes in him he will take care of you god will take care of me i say god will take care of me you may not have an earthly father, earthly mother, earthly helper, but the Lord will take perfect care of you throughout the rest of your life in Jesus' name. It says God is in his holy habitation. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us. Think about that. It's not just giving us. It's every day loading us with benefits. Even the God of our salvation. Once you are saved, you are born again, you are a child of God, and you know all the promises that flew through, that came through Christ at Calvary everything is flowing your direction it will daily load your will benefits in jesus name look at jeremiah chapter 49 i will read him from verse 11 jeremiah chapter 49 verse 11 leave thy fatherless children i will preserve them alive leave them in my hand the fatherless children let those fatherless children let them hope in the lord let them look at the promises of god let them search their trust their confidence their hope in the lord they will not be disappointed in jesus name i will not be disappointed I will not be disappointed. Leave those fatherless children and I will preserve them alive and let thy widows trust in me. Let the widows trust in the Lord. There will be no disappointment in your life in Jesus' name. I wish, you know, my husband were there. Don't worry, God will take care of you. I wish my father, my mother were there. Don't worry, the Lord will take care of you. Good care, he will take of you in Jesus' name. Let's look at number two there. Number two is the predicted recompense of the faithless and the wicked. We come back to Psalm 146 and we're looking at verse 9. It says in Psalm 146 verse 9, the Lord preserveth the strangers, he relieveth the fatherless and widows. Look at this, but but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The way of the wicked he turneth upside down. Now the wicked are the faithless. The faithless are the wicked. Let me show you that in Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse two. Second Thessalonians chapter three, and we're reading here from verse two. Look at this, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. He calls them unreasonable. He calls them wicked. Unreasonable and wicked men. Why did he call them wicked men? 
for all men have not faith. They do not have faith in God. They do not have confidence in God. They don't even know that God is there. They think whatever wickedness they perpetrate, everything will be all right eventually because after all, there is no God that is viewing them or watching them. It says all men have not faith and then it says there's a predicted recompense for the faithless and the wicked. We're looking at Romans chapter 1. We're looking at it from verse 28. Romans chapter 1 reading from verse 28. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, those are the faithless people and the people who do not reckon with God in their actions, in their behavior, in their lifestyle, in their worship, in everything, anything they do. They do not reckon with the existence of God, even as they did not retain God in their knowledge. And then you say God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. In verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, that's the word right there, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, the debate, the siege, malignity, whisperers. Look at Vastachi. It says in Vastachi, backbiters and haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. And then in verse 31, it says, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. In verse 32, it says, so knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. It tells us that those who forget God and those who do not reckon with God, who are faithless, they don't put their faith in God, judgment will come eventually. First John chapter 3. In First John chapter 3, we're looking at verse 12, not as Cain, faithless, not as Cain, wicked, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, the same father, the same mother, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and he brothers righteous, because of jealousy, and because of envy, that's why he did what he did. And then in verse 13, it says in verse 13, My well, not my brethren, if the world, Christless world, unsaved world, corrupt world, sinful world, hate you. And then in verse 14, it says, We know that we are passed from death unto life. I have passed from death unto life. Somebody there, I have passed from death unto life. Because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death, spiritual death. He that loveth not his brother, he that loveth not his sister, he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. And then in verse 15, it says, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. I will not hate. I will not hate. I will not hate anyone created by God. Why am I not hearing your voice? Eternal life abides in me. Be it confirmed practically in Jesus' name. Number three now, it says, Perpetual reign of the Father of all wonders. That's our God. That's your God. That's your Father. That's my Father. That's our Father. And He's the Father of all wonders. Wonders in your life. Wonders in my life. I said wonders in my life. 
the Lord will hear all the prayers we're all together praying for you in Jesus name look at this look at this perpetual reign uh, of the father of all wonders in Psalm 146 verse 10 the Lord shall reign forever in your life the Lord shall reign forever over your challenges the Lord shall reign forever over those Egyptians pursuing your life the Lord shall reign forever over invisible and visible enemies the Lord shall reign forever even thy God O Zion unto all generations praise ye the Lord I've lost the amen Exodus chapter 15 verse 18 Exodus chapter 15 verse 18 The Lord shall reign forever and ever They were just coming out of Egypt And they saw how the Egyptians were drowned in the sea He reigned over them And now they were assured He has reigned over all the past enemies and then uh, as we're moving on until we get to the land of promise until we get to the land of Canaan our Lord shall reign forever and ever all the journey before you and all the road and all the paths before you the Lord will reign forever and ever in your life in Jesus name in Psalm 93 verse 1 Psalm 93 looking at verse 1 the Lord reigneth he is clothed with majesty the Lord is clothed with strength wherewith he has guarded himself the world also is established that it cannot be moved the Lord reigneth even today the Lord reigneth at the present time the Lord reigneth and every present moment in your life the Lord will continue to reign in Jesus name why because he is clothed with majesty the Lord is clothed with strength wherewith he has guarded himself in your life he'll keep on reigning Isaiah chapter 52 verse 7 in Isaiah chapter 52 verse 7 how beautiful upon the mountains at the feet of him that bringeth good tidings that publishes peace that bringeth good tidings of good and publishes salvation that saith unto Zion everybody thy God reigneth say that again thy God reigneth say that again Satan will not reign in your life evil spirit will not reign in your life as you take the good tidings and you take the gospel and you are giving it to people and you are saying Jesus Christ died for them I came to announce to you that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved as you are busy in the work of the Lord our God will reign in your life he will reign in your ministry it will reign in all your outreaches in Jesus name while God is reigning look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says thy watchmen shall lift up the voice that God is reigning with the voice together shall they sing for they shall see eye to eye there will be unity all divisions will be cut off criticism all cut off and schism all cut off all those differences all erased out of our ministry in jesus name but they shall see eye to eye when the lord shall bring again zion and let's look at revelation now revelation chapter 11 we're looking at verse 15 revelation 11 15 and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever our god has the final say 
our Christ as the final say, our Redeemer, our Savior as the final say in the history of the world and in the prophecy for the world, in everything events that will happen in the world, our God as the final say, He will reign forever and ever in Jesus' name. We're looking at Revelation chapter 19, verse 6. Revelation chapter 19, we're looking at verse 6. It says, And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God, omnipotent reigneth. He has begun to reign in your life. He will never stop reigning in your life in Jesus' name. Chapter 22 of Revelation. In chapter 22 of Revelation, is telling us about the reign of the Lord. He says, and there shall be no more curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Where are those servants? And his servant shall serve him. And then in verse 4, it says in verse 4, And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Look at verse 5. It says, And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall, and they shall, and they shall, I will be in that number. I will be in that number. I will be in the number. You'll be in the number in Jesus' name. And they shall reign forever and ever. And we shall reign forever and ever. You'll be there. Brother, you'll be there. Sister, you'll be there. Why don't you rise up then and thank the Lord for what he has done. It's made you a saint. It's made you saved. It's made you a child of God. It's made you a worker. It's made you a servant. It's made you a leader in, the, in Zion, in the, in the congregation of the righteous. He loves you and he has raised you up and he's reigning in your life now and then forever and ever it will reign in your life. Praise the Lord, then praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the depth of your heart. Praise the Lord continually where you have any being. Praise the Lord. He relieves, He kills, He heals, He delivers, and then He's thinking the best of you. Praise the Lord.